Hi friends, I'm Grishma and you're watching my channel G Tutorial. Today's class is about cellular communication. This is for CBD2 of electronics and allied engineering branches. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel for getting more RRB J related videos. Now let us get to our portion. First, let us see what is meant by cellular concept. It's a system level idea where we are replacing a single high power transmitter by several low power transmitters and each providing coverage to only a small portion of the service area. That is, we are dividing the entire geographical area. Suppose if you are considering our city, we are dividing the city into several small small portions called cells and we can define a cell as a basic geographical unit of a cellular communication system. So the smallest uh, area of a cellular communication system is called as a cell. And the radio coverage of a cell is known as its footprint. Radio coverage of any cell is called the footprint of the cell. Although the real footprint of a cell is irregular or amorphous in nature, but a regular or symmetric shape is required for footprint because in order to have systematic system design and adaptation for future growth. So, whenever we are thinking about any shape, the first shape that comes to our mind is a circle. But we cannot use circle to represent our cell because the area between the server, uh, between the circle is not covered by any of the base station. That is, this portion is not covered by the base station. So, while choosing any of the geometric shape, it should cover the entire region without overlap and with equal area. These are the two things. There should not be overlap or gap left like this and it should cover the equal area. So the shape that can be considered for a cell is square, equilateral triangle, hexagon, etc. So let us see what are the necessities before choosing any geometric shape. The first thing that cell must be designed to serve even the weakest mobile within its footprint. That is the, the mobile may be either located at the edge of the cell. So it must be in a position to serve even the weakest mobile. So for a given distance between the center of the polygon and its farthest point, hexagon has the largest area. So we are choosing a hexagon to represent the cell. Because hexagon has largest area compared to equilateral triangle and square. So hexagon is our choice for uh, representing the shape of the cell. And another advantage is that a uh, fewest number of cells is required. If you are using hexagon to represent cell, only a few number of cells is required to cover the given geographical area. So in practice, in cellular concept, we are representing a cell by hexagon and shape. Next is where to place the base station transmitter in case of a hexagonal cell. There can be two possible choice. Either the transmitter may be located at the center of the cell. So it is called center excited cell. And in this case, an omnidirectional antenna is used. That is, it is transmitting in all directions. Omnidirectional antenna means transmitting in all directions equally. And in another choice is that we can use a base station transmitter at any of the three edges of the six cell vertices. So in that case, the cell is called an edge excited cell. And in there we will be using sector directional antennas. Sector directional antennas are used in case of edge excited cell. So two possible cases are there where the cell is excited either by an omnidirectional antenna and in that case the transmitter base transmitter base station transmitter is located at the center of the cell. If it is located at any of the three edges of the cell, it is called edge excited cell and their sector directional antennas are used. Now let us study about mobile phone system. This is the architecture of the mobile phone system. It involves mainly four basic structures. Mobile station, base transceiver station, base switching, base station controller and mobile switching center. 
which are the four things mobile station base transceiver station base station controller and mobile switching center mobile station is actually our mobile phones and the base transceiver station or base station is the transmitter that is located within each geographical basic geographical that is located within each cell so whenever a call is initiated let us consider uh, ms1 is trying to call ms2 both are located in different geographical areas let let us uh, initiate a call from uh, mumbai to pune so uh, the mobile station uh, from this mobile station the signal is transmitted to the nearby base transceiver station that is the cell in which this mobile is located from there to the base station controller and from base station controller to the mobile switching center of that area of mumbai city from there to the mobile switching center of pune city from there to base station controller and to base transceiver station where this mob ms2 is located and from there to ms this is what happens when we are trying to initiate a call the signal is first transmitted to the base station then to base station controller then to mobile switching center of that area from there to the mobile switching center of the second area then to bsc then to bts and finally to ms whenever a mobile user is trying to call someone the msc allows a separate channel for this user plus a channel 3 is allotted for this user by the msc suppose if all the channels are occupied then the user has to wait till any of the channels is free for use in that case the user gets either a network error notification or call cannot be complete now let us study about the concept frequency reuse each base station in a mobile phone system is allotted with a group of radio channels that can be used by different users at a time and the base station in the adjacent cell is usually assigned with a different group of channels so that uh, the there may not occur there may not occur any interference between the channels used in neighboring cells uh, usually the uh, coverage of any base station is limited only within that cell that is this transmitter provides coverage only to that cell in frequency reuse concept so that we can use the same set of channel in some other cells that are located at a farther distance uh, so that there may, be, there may not be any interference between the the channels used in this base uh, the cell and the channel used in a cell that is located at a far distance so same group of channel can be reused at a location different from this so that interference level is limited that is limited within any tolerable limit so the design process of selecting and allocating channel groups for all of the cellular base station within a system is called frequency reuse or frequency plan this is known as frequency reuse or frequency plan let us have a clear idea of the frequency reuse concept by consider an example here we are using seven different channels a b c d e f g and reusing this different seven different channels in a geographical area so that uh, there is no interference between the same channels there is no interference between a and a b and b and so on so we are designing in such a way and uh, this n cells here n is seven Uh, the n cells which collectively use the complete set of frequency is known as a cluster so cluster is a group of cells which uses the same uh, the, the available set of frequencies so this is a cluster 
This is a cluster. Here the cluster size n is equal to 7. We are using 7 different communication channels. And each cell will be available 1 by 7 of this uh, allotted frequencies. That is, this cell is allocated with the 7 different channels. This cell is allocated with A to G. 7 different channels. So, the frequency reuse factor is given by 1 by A. That is 1 by cluster size. Cluster size is 1 by 7. That is the number of number of channels that is available to any cell. It is 1 by 7. So, uh, the next thing we have to uh, notice is that if you are starting from a cell using the frequency A in order to get the nearest co-channel cell, the distance we have to move is given by the cluster size A which is equal to I square plus IJ plus J square where i and j are any two non-negative integers. In this case, cluster size is 7. So let us take i and j as i is 2 and j is 1. If we are moving distance, i square plus i square plus ij plus j square is n. Here n is equal to 7. i square is 2. i is 2. So 2 square plus 2 into 1 plus 1 square, which is 4 plus 2 plus 1, that is 7. So let us move i square. First we are moving i square distance in a straight line. So we are moving in a straight line. Two, I, I is 2. Moving i, i distance in a straight line. So we are moving from here 2 cells. Okay. 1, 2. 2 cells. We have moved 2 cells. Then we are Taking a 90, 60 degree rotation in anti-clockwise direction. So we move 60 degree. And then we are moving J cells. So here we are moving I cells in the forward direction. Here I is 2. And then taking 60 degree rotation and moving J cells. To reach the core channel cell. So we reached A itself. In similar way we are getting all other core channel cells. From C to C. From D to next D. We are adopting the same. We have to move I distance in the straight direction. Take 60 degree turn and in the anti-clockwise direction and move J cells. Okay. If a cellular system is available with yes duplex channels. Duplex means two way communication is possible. Simplex means only one way communication is possible. If a cellular system is allotted with yes duplex channels. And for each cell. K channels are available. There are if there are n cells, then each then we can represent the s two plus channels is equal to k times the number of cells. S is equal to k into n. S is the total number of channels allotted to a cellular system. K is the channels allotted to each of these n cells. So there are n cells. So k into n gives the total number of channels in a cellular system. Next is, if a cluster is repeated m times, we have seen clusters, if that cluster is repeated m times, then the cellular cap uh, then the total capacity of the cellular system is given by m into, m is the size, number of clusters, and s is the uh, total number of duplex channels allowed in each, in a cellular system. So, m into s gives the total capacity of the cellular system. Uh, S can be replaced by K into N. So, M into K into N gives the total capacity of the cellular system. And we can say that from here, we can say that the capacity of a cellular system is directly proportional to the number of clusters that is repeated. So, C is directly proportional to M. Yeah. Now, let us do a problem to understand this uh, concepts very clearly. This is a question. If a total of 33 megahertz bandwidth is allocated to a particular cellular system which uses 225 kilohertz in plus channels to provide full duplex voice and control channel. Compute the number of channels available per cell if the system uses 4 cell reuse, 7 cell reuse and 12 cell reuse. So here we are given the total bandwidth of the system is, cellular system is 33 Megahertz, 33 mega. Let us express it in terms of kilohertz. So 33,000 kilohertz. And uh, it is said that here uh, 225 kilohertz simplex channel is 
simple standard means only one way communication so two simple standards use one channel is used for uh, communication uh, to a receiver and from receiver to back and the simple standard is used so a single uh, duplex standard if you are uh, considering a single duplex channel its bandwidth will be two times the bandwidth of the single uh, simple channel so 2 into 25 kilohertz that is 50 kilohertz is the bandwidth of the single duplex channel so the number of channels allotted to the cellular system that is given by s yes. S is the number of channels of a cellular system. It is equal to the total bandwidth divided by the bandwidth of a single channel. So, 33,000 divided by single channel has a uh, bandwidth of 50 hits. So, this is equal to 660. 660 is the number of channels allotted to the entire system. Now, let us see. We are asked to compute the number of channels available per cell. Number of R. First case is A is N is equal to 4. Cell reuses 4. So we have seen S is equal to K times N. Here we are asked to find the K number of channels allotted to each cell in case when N is equal to 4. So K is equal to S by N. In this case, S is 660 by N is 4, which is equal to 165 is the number of channels allotted in that case. In second case, when n is equal to 7, k is equal to 660 by 7. 95. 95 is the number of cells. And the third case, when n is equal to 12, k is equal to 660 by 12, which is 55. 55 is the number of channels. Now, we have seen uh, the cellular concept uh, frequency reuse in the next class we will be learning more about cellular communication if you are having any doubt you can comment below thank you